Well, hello. Welcome to another short devotional. That song you heard a few minutes ago, or part of it, that is a lead-in to our next series about the battle. The battle is real, isn't it? The battle for our hearts, our minds, our children, our friends. And I want to tell you something. It's a battle. It is not just a one-time little scrimmage. I believe before the Lord returns again, you and I will be fighting many a battle. But there are things we can do to survive. And one is to understand the strategy of the enemy, and that is Satan. He has one thing he loves to do, and that is to make you and I feel alone. You're not alone. If I say nothing else that you hear today, just know this, you're not alone. In nature, we all see a herd of animals running together. And here comes that nasty old lion that needs a, a meal. He needs a snack. And what does he do? He tries to cut out one of those animals from the herd. And if he can, he has his snack. It's sad, isn't it? I'm sure you're like me. Most of us turn those shows off. But we need to realize that that's exactly the strategy the enemy uses with you and I. If he can cut us off from the herd, if he can make us feel that whatever we're going through is unusual, different, perhaps something we're ashamed of, or perhaps it's something that we don't feel we can talk to with others because we think we're responsible, then he has won. First of all, know this. Everyone was born with the ability to f have free will. Many of the things that our friends and our families go through are as a result of their choices. And if you allow yourself to be taken down in grief because you feel responsible, stop it now. You're not. Secondly, if you've been attending a church and you've stopped because you don't care for the people, ask yourself a question. Is this also a tactic of the enemy? It can be. I want you to know that. Because the Bible gives us a scripture. I love this scripture. It is found, i got to find it, I'm scrolling, scrolling, in Deuteronomy 32.30. And he's talking about, he's asking God a question. He said, how can one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock has sold them and the Lord has surrendered them? What does that mean? If we serve the Lord, one of us is powerful. But two of us? And so one of the things the enemy is doing in this last day is to make people stop going to church. You may not like everything that happens at church. Perhaps you feel bad because the pastor hasn't called you when you're going through this difficult trial. First of all, he's not God. He does not know everything. He cannot read your mind if you have not told him and have not shared with him. But secondly, he cannot be God in your life either. So stop blaming the pastor. The people, they're not your friends. They're clicky. They're, you don't feel like you fit in. Well, hello. That is still not a reason to allow something so powerful as corporate prayer to be removed from your life. So if you're not going somewhere, start going somewhere. Go to a Bible-believing church that believes in prayer, that will stand with you, okay? So let's get out that out of the way, and let's start believing God. We're going to study about the battle. The battle is real, and we need to know that we can stand together. One of the things I do is that I love to read the Word of God out loud. I get excited and I was reading something. I'd like to read a little bit of it with you. Psalm 68. You know that God is powerful. He truly is. And if Satan has you convinced that whatever problem you're going through today is unsolvable, then you need to look into the Word again. 
Psalm 68. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Yes, our enemies, whatever it is, delusion on our children. If they're believing a lie, let's pray that the enemy be scattered. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. Yes, we can in prayer together, we can believe that whatever it is, God is more powerful. But let the righteous be glad, not downtrodden. Let them be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens and rejoice before him. He's a father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He brings out those which are bound with chains. Are you hearing me? If your family member, your loved one, your uh, associate at work is bound in chains, God can bring them out. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. Oh God, the earth shook. I love this. Oh God, verse 7, when thou went forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, the earth shook. The heaven also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain when thou didst confirm thine inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou, O God, has prepared thy goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. He just near, needs to speak the word. And great was the company of thou that published it. I'm jumping ahead because there's lots to Psalm 68. Okay, the chariots of God in verse 17 are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them. You are not alone. I love this. I love this uh, chapter. He that is our God is the God of salvation. Pray for salvation. Pray, stand in the gap for your loved ones, for your friends, for your family. He that is our God is the God of salvation. Unto God the Lord belongs the issues from death. So you can stand in that place. Let's see. Jumping to 32. Sing, O God, ye kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises unto the Lord. To him that rides upon the heaven of heavens, which were of old, lo, he that send out his voice, and that a mighty voice, ascribe ye strength unto God. His excellency is over Israel. His strength is in the clouds. I love clouds. How about you? O God, thou art terrible out, thy, out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that gives strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. If you feel alone, know this. God is there. You have friends who want to stand with you. Let's put on our armor. This week, we're going to talk about hope. There is hope. Yes, there is. There is so much God can do about that situation you're in. Let's close in prayer. Oh, Father, I thank you for the hope you give me. I thank you, Father, for the hope you give unto my family and to my friends. Thank you, Father. You are able to do above, exceedingly above, that which we ask or think. Do not allow my friends to be cut out from the herd, Father. Don't let them stand alone. Father, bring them back with hope and faith. Help them to look up above where my Father sits in the clouds. Oh, thank you, Father. Lord, I know this battle may be long, but Father, you win the battle. So until next time, let's stand together 
Do not allow yourself to be alone. Allow yourself to trust God. Until next time, I remain your friend, Lana Dee.